So let's talk about liver architecture. The liver is going to be an organ that has a very unique architecture. And owing to that architecture is going to be function. So the function and the architecture are going to be nice and related, thankfully. And we've talked about a lot of stuff so far that kind of has been out there. This is very, uh, I would say, simple. Um, it's, it's easy once you understand the function. So let's talk about the liver architecture. You see these uh, cellular, kind of like a honeycomb matrix here. So it's going to have like a hexagonal appearance. You're going to have six sides. Now at the, at the intersection here, here and here and here and here and here and here, so on, Every at each corner of this hexagon, you're going to have a portal triad. So a portal triad, what makes up a portal triad? Well, it's going to be three things. So it'll be the hepatic portal vein. So the hepatic portal vein is going to receive its flow from the intestine. So something gets absorbed in the intestine, it'll go to the portal circulation, it'll eventually make its way to the hepatic portal vein here. Also we've got the hepatic artery. So the liver is going to have two blood supplies, one from the portal circulation, one from the arterial circulation, so it'll have two different blood supplies. Then also we've got a bile duct component. So look, we've got three vessels in each of these locations, and that's going to be our portal triad. And then also notice here how we have a central vein in the middle of our honeycomb structure. So it's going to be a central vein. So there's three different ways to classify the liver architecture. You're going to have the classic lobule and I'll, I'll explain a little, about, little bit about each of these. Um, right now, I'm just going to list them because there's three main views that we're going to take from this lecture. So we've got the classic lobule. We've also got a portal lobule. Portal lobule. And then also we've got the hepatic acinus the hepatic acinus. So I will talk about each of these. And with the hepatic acinus, uh, we have a great kind of like clinical tie-in. There's some zones. We'll have fun with those zones. So let's, uh, the thing on this slide that I want you to take away is the portal triad and then the central vein. Just notice that their location. The portal triad is going to be on the periphery and then around in the middle is going to be the central vein. So let's move on. We've got the classic lobule. A classic lobule is going to be the anatomic model. So looking at here, we look at this anatomic picture of, of the cellular uh, organization, and we see this honeycomb hexagon appearance. A lobule will simply be one portion of, of that honeycomb. It'll include the hexagon. So think of the anatomic hexagon. Now I say it's the anatomic model because you'll have that central vein in the middle and around it you'll have the portal triads. So like I said, there's three components, one being the bile duct, one the hepatic portal vein, and one the hepatic artery. Now what's going to happen is our hepatic artery will diffuse blood across cells into our central vein. Also we have our portal circulation. Remember portal circulation, I'm going to get a different color here. We have portal circulation coming from the intestine and that portal circulation is going to go across the liver. That's going to absorb stuff. It's going to uh, destroy toxins, etc. And then it's going to make its way to the circulation through the central vein. Remember the central vein. Central vein is going to go uh, from the liver to the inferior vena cava. So it'll eventually make its way into circulation. So uh, I am going to go off on a little tangent here, so if you're, if you're already aware of this, um, you can go ahead and tune out for a few seconds, otherwise stay with me. We've got the portal circulation. What is the portal circulation? Well, it's going to come from the intestines. 
We're going to absorb stuff in our intestines. It'll go to the portal circulation. That'll go to the liver. So here's our portal uh, circulation. That, that's going to be our hepatic portal vein. And then from the liver, it'll go to the inferior vena cava. And from there, it'll go to the body because it goes to the heart and it'll get pumped into the body. So that's our, that's our system here. What the classic lobule shows is we're going to drain fluids from the triad. So we're going to drain blood from the hepatic artery. We're going to uh, we're going to drain fluid from the hepatic vein here, that hepatic portal vein. So I draw it in blue because it's already kind of deoxygenated, kind of, and uh, contains nutrients and stuff. And then we've got the bile. I'm going to change colors one last time on you. We've got bile. So. I said that it was a hepatic triad, meaning there's three things. One of them's a bile duct. So let's consider this our bile duct. Notice how these drain towards the central lobule. However, the bile duct is going to drain opposite of that. We're going to drain from the central vein to the bile duct. And this is going to cause a whole bunch of bile ducts to coalesce, forming our biliary system. So bile is going to drain in the opposite direction. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so notice how we have drainage in get a different color in that direction, in that direction, and now in an opposite direction for the bile duct. This is going to be our classic lobule. We call it an anatomic hexagon. It's an anatomic model because this is how our liver cells are set up. Functionally, it's not as important because we're going to have all these draining in and bile going out, etc., etc., etc. It's just how the anatomy was set up. It was very efficient. So now let's take a look at a different model. We've got the portal lobule model. So the portal lobule model. So what this is, is it's going to focus on biliary excretion, bile excretion. Bile is going to contain the wastes. So what we see here is we're going to see three central veins and three, uh, three classic lobules. Because remember, a classic lobule was just one of those hexagons. Now we have three classic lobules side by side. And we've got three central veins. Well, what happens if we make a triangle between these three? What do we see? Well, we see in the very middle of that triangle, we're going to have our portal triad. And in that portal triad, we have the three components, three components. One of them was the hepatic artery, one of them was the hepatic portal vein, and then the last one is the bile duct. So the bile duct is going to be our main focus. Now I'm going to go backwards the slide. Notice here how bile drains from the central vein to the bile duct. So if we look at a portal lobule, so a portal lobule is just an imaginary triangle connecting three adjacent central veins. And what we're going to do is we're going to have bile go towards the center. So bile drains from that center, the central vein into the portal triad. So we're just simply looking at it at a different picture, where in the middle of our picture is going to be the bile duct. And then our central veins will be on the periphery and drain bile towards that uh, central triad, or the portal triad and then we get rid of bile. So we're taking a look at the bile. The triad is in the middle of the triangle between the three central veins. Okay, and then lastly, we've got a hepatic acinus. So the hepatic acini. These are uh, going to be a diamond shaped. Diamond shaped. And what it does is these are going to demonstrate blood flow. Well, blood flow didn't we just cover blood flow? Well, yes, kind of, but this really accurately describes zones. So we'll be able to we'll be able to break this into different zones. So different zones, and I'll cover that in the next slide. But right now, I said it's diamond shaped. How is it going to be diamond shaped? It's going to be just like this, where we have central veins at one end of the diamond, and then on the other end of the diamond, we have the hepatic triad, the portal triad. So what good is this? Well, we know that, let's see if I can get a different color. Let's do yellow. All right, so we've got a line here. 
this is where we're going to have most of our blood because remember blood is coming from this hepatic artery it's also coming from the hepatic portal vein bile ducts we can just forget about those right now we're talking about our blood supply so that portal hepatic vein and the hepatic artery have a ton of blood that they're distributing the area between the two will have the most and then we'll be able to break these into two more zones so we've got this first area we've got this second area and then we've got finally this third area that's just right next to the central vein so this first one is going to be zone one this is going to be zone two and then the final one will be zone three you may be saying zone one has the richest blood supply and yes it does that's going to be a very important feature However, I'm just going to cover the terminology right now. Zone 1 is also called the periportal zone. The periportal zone. Why do we call it the periportal zone? Remember our portal circulation was coming from the intestines and our hepatic portal vein is going to be located right next to zone 1 here. So this area right in here is going to be zone 1. All right, so now we've got zone two. Zone two is gonna be called uh, something else. It'll be called the intermediate immediate zone. So we have the intermediate zone now. So it'll be this area in here, the intermediate zone. It's not the richest in the blood supply because all the blood, uh, the oxygenated blood is coming from the hepatic artery and the portal vein. That'll be in zone one. However, the intermediate zone will get the kind of leftovers, and uh, and it'll be okay. And then we finally have zone three. Zone three is going to be called the peri pericentral, pericentral, the pericentral zone. And if you can tell here, it's right next to that central vein. So we've got the pericentral it's going to be the furthest away from this oxygen rich blood so again we can tie that into uh, to clinical experience and we'll cover that on the next slide so we've got three different zones of this hepatic acinus and the hepatic acinus is going to be our best model that demonstrates the blood flow from the hepatic artery and the hepatic portal vein into the central vein so hepatic portal vein plus the hepatic artery and its route it takes to the central vein. Okay, now let's cover the different zones. So we already talked about the naming for the different zones. Now let's talk about some clinical tie-ins. It is going to be closest, closest to the blood supply. Now I've already said that. It makes sense. It's closest to the blood supply. So in hypoxic states, it'll be closest to whatever whatever oxygen's available, so it will not die off. Um, also, viral hepatitis. 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 Hepatitis is going to affect this area first. So, uh, viral hepatitis, think zone 1 is affected first. Okay, next we've got zone 2. Zone 2 is going to be... Uh, lesser blood supply. Notice how I say lesser, it's not the worst because zone 3 is going to be the worst blood supply. And when I say blood supply I'm talking oxygenated blood. If we're in a state of hypoxia, if we block some blood flow to the liver, it'll still get oxygenated blood. However, it won't deliver very oxygen-rich blood to all the cells. It'll deliver most of its oxygen-rich blood to the closest thing to the hepatic artery, and that'll be zone 1 cells. Next, we've got zone 2, and that'll have a lesser blood supply, and then furthest away from that oxygen-rich blood will be zone 3. So, this will be most uh, most sensitive to hypoxia. Zone 3 will die off. Uh, also of note for zone 2 is going to be yellow fever. If you get yellow fever, it's going to be the second zone, zone 2, that is going to be affected. 
And then lastly, we've got zone three. I've already said it's the worst blood supply. And another feature is gonna be drug detox. The drug detox system is gonna be rampant here. So you've got your cytochrome P systems. And those are gonna be most sensitive to acetaminophen poisoning because you're gonna get the metabolite buildup. So acetaminophen has toxic metabolites. And if you have a very strong drug detox system in zone three, you're gonna have a high concentration of that toxic metabolite. So you'll have acetaminophen, acetaminophen poisoning. So Tylenol poisoning uh, is gonna affect zone three. It'll kill off those zone three cells. So this is uh, the basics of the architecture of the liver. Uh, I'm just gonna go back to the beginning, make sure I hit all Yep, we talked about each one of these. We talked about the zones. We talked about the portal triad and the basic structure and the function that happens. So we're talking about the, the bile. We're going to think more of like the portal lobule architecture. If we're talking about the blood flow, we'd be thinking hepatic acinus. If we're thinking anatomy, we'd be talking about the classic lobule. Hopefully this is making sense uh, a little more than it was um, hopefully you took something away from this video. If you liked it or if you found it useful, please click like. Uh, it helps build up my ego. Otherwise, subscribe for more great videos and leave some good comments. I always enjoy reading some good comments. Thank you, YouTube. Have a good night.